Greetings, and welcome to Dougie Dialogues. I'm Dr. Monique Mitchell, and we're webcasting from Dougie Center in Portland, Oregon. Dougie Center, the first childhood bereavement center in the United States, is recognized as an international leader in the childhood bereavement field for supporting children and families who are grieving. In these 30-minute discussions, Dougie Center staff explore language, trends, research, theories, and other relevant topics related to death, dying, loss, and grief. Our intention is to continue to shape the professional dialogue in the field, and we hope to spark some thought-provoking conversations along the way. Dougie Dialogues are primarily intended for an audience of professionals working to support children and families who are grieving. If you're looking for lived experience or support for your own grief, head on over to our Dougie Center podcast, Grief Out Loud, on iTunes or your favorite listening platform. Thanks so much for joining us and welcome to Dougie Dialogues. Hi, Donna. Hi, Monique. Uh, so here we are with another Dougie Dialogues. I think the last time we did one was probably a year ago. Um, so it's been some time, but we are back uh, and we have a new publication to talk about. Uh, the last time we chatted about, I think it was in January of 2021, we had just written the position paper on becoming grief informed. Uh, and now we have a new uh, publication and I'm just wondering if you want to share a bit about it. Well, if I recall correctly, our first one was about 49 pages. <laughs> yeah. You know, pretty dense, pretty, I, I, I'm not going to say comprehensive because we could really write an encyclopedia, you know, volumes around the topic of being grief informed, understanding grief, how people grieve, how to support them, whether they're children or, or adults. But recognizing 49 pages really kind of geared more to professionals uh, could use a little uh, shorter version. And so we, we, you know, how do you pare 49 pages down to, I think we wound up with two. three or two, two pages mm -hmm. plus some of the illustrations of that, but uh yeah, so we have a more user-friendly, I think, version. Yeah, and it was, it's it's definitely uh, complementary to the position paper. I wouldn't say that just for folks who are listening, it's not yeah. a complete summary of it, but I think yeah. what we recognize is there's some key points, which are the 10 core principles of grief-informed practice, which we wanted to... Um, include and also uh, address it for a different audience for an everyday audience people who mm. this isn't their field and they are like what do you mean by this principle um, and then also the um, some action steps so I'll hand it back to you Donna but I just wanted to let folks know that this is not there is very important crucial information the position paper about the lack of uh, you know grief grief education, the disparities that we see in healthcare with responding and supporting people who are grieving of different ethnicities and backgrounds and abilities and all of that, the history of thanatology. So I, I just don't want folks to think if they read this short little paper, it is a replacement for the position paper because it's not. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I do think it's more accessible mm -hmm. perhaps. And, and I think you know, one of the reasons that we really decided at Dougie Center, we, we need to do more around trying to get the, the message out about being grief informed for a lot of reasons. And certainly one of them in the, the two plus years of the pandemic, there's been so much more emphasis on grief and loss, grief from death and grief from non-death losses, like almost like we're in a mass grief bubble for, for several years. And there's a lot out there to wade through, some of which, which I think is the case in any discipline or opinions, there's 
stuff out there we support and agree with and stuff we don't really agree with and support. And so I think it was really important and helpful for us to articulate that and be able to get it out to wider audience. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think, you know, the other thing that we heard from folks uh, when we put the position paper is <clears throat> we were really just trying to draw attention to this, well, various aspects in, in regards to being grief informed. But some of our, our you know, our, our friends and our colleagues in the field said, you know, we really love this. And, you know, what are the specific st steps, though? What are the steps that you're saying you need to take? And so that was very helpful when we did the presentation at NACG, for those who may not know that, that's the National Alliance for Children's Grief. Um, in um, It was online last year, so it wasn't in any particular state, but we actually incorporated those 10 action steps. And thank you for the folks who gave us that feedback. We're like, well, that's a good point. We should probably put that together. And so that's what this short uh, version does as well. It allows us to not only revisit the 10 core principles in, um, I would say, like, you said, Donna, in more accessible language, I would say the principles are exactly the same as those that are stated in the position paper. It's just how we describe them. Um, and then what are the action steps that anybody, and I, I want to emphasize that the short paper is not necessarily, it's not written for people in our field, even though it's accessible for a field. So I, I guess not exclusively. It's really for anybody, anybody, whether they are in whatever, you know, any discipline or any, um, you know, area can look at that and say, how can I, as a member of my community, as a member of my family, as a member of my friend circle, support somebody who's grieving through this, uh, through those action steps. Yeah, and we certainly have faced that with our families at Dougie Center over the last couple of years, where some of the pandemic restrictions prevented the same kind of public support and, and, and uh, being present together mm -hmm. that was possible prior to that. And I think the thing that a lot of people contact us around also are how do we support our friends, our families right. who are grieving this death of a child, of a spouse, of a partner. And so it's applicable both to people who are grieving as well as people who wanna support, whether it's children, teens, young adults or adults who have experienced the death of someone in their lives. Mm -hmm. as well as professionals. So it's right. kind of a... An all-inclusive. <laughs> <laughs> trying it covers to be. <laughs> a lot. I think it covers a lot of bases because we're what we're trying to do is like, really, what are our core beliefs after over 40 years at Dougie Center of listening to children and families certainly after 40 years and thousands and thousands of children from three up through young adults and their adult caregivers, you definitely start to see right. what are the trends, what are the things almost everyone says. And a lot of those have to do with social support. Mm -hmm. We feel like people have abandoned us we feel like they don't understand. We feel like they want us to move on. Stigma. We feel like when we talk about mm -hmm. our person who died, we're making other people feel uncomfortable and awkward, you know, which makes us want to isolate even more. So this is really the culmination mm -hmm. of listening to people with lived experience over all of these years and people from all kinds of backgrounds, ages, you know, deaths and life experiences. Right. And, you know, it reminds me, Donna, one of the things that I really like to share in the Becoming Grief Informed webinar that we do. Um, and for those of you who aren't familiar, we do have grief education webinars, which are available on our website. And I'm fairly sure there'll be a link below this uh, Dougie Dialogues episode to, to direct you there. Uh, but 
I really like to emphasize that these aren't things that were pie in the sky, you know, principles were like, hey, what principles do should we think we should come up with? They were really listening to and 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 reflecting on all of the different stories we've heard, all of the different, and this is over the years. So it's accumulation of, um, you know, just different feedback we've heard from program coordinators over the years in regards to what they're learning from their families, what we get in our helpline, people calling in and really saying, what is the message? Like, what is the main message that the average person who's grieving, when you think about those dominant themes, like you said, want the general public to know, right? And we really wanted to emphasize those because we know that in mainstream society, that there is a different, there are different approaches and perspectives to how do you support someone who's grieving and how do you perceive grief and what do you categorize grief as and is grief a mental disorder right is it a pathology um, and that's something that we at Dougie Center don't align with we do not think grief is a mental disorder uh, we also don't align that it is a pathology or that we should pathologize people who are grieving because we think grief is a pathology that's inaccurate so I think another reason for really um putting those principles together was to help educate general public around, like you said, the lived experience. And I think it's important uh, just again, to, to, for us to make that clear that this isn't, even though, you know, Monique and Donna put the, put it together. These are, these are things that came from thousands and thousands of people's um, experiences. Yeah. And I think just to, I don't know, tap into the piece around grief not being a mental disorder, not being a pathology, which is where some of the field is moving, the field of the study of grief and loss and, and how to help people. And we're not saying that people don't struggle. We're not oh, saying that people don't have issues. We're not saying that people can't benefit some people from qualified, experienced therapists, counselors. What we are saying is that to impose that you have, for example, prolonged grief disorder because of these list of symptoms, like you're taking too long or your grief is too intense or you're avoiding places you used to, one of them is around avoiding places you used to frequent with the person who died. And one of the things that we know is a lot of people don't frequent places they used to because people don't invite them anymore, <laughs> you know, or there's just a broader social and mm -hmm. cultural aspect to all of this and not just what's going on in the individual's own head and, you know, that kind of individualist uh, look at grief as if grief is only emotions as well. Right. right. You know? I think, you know, I think about that, for example, like what's wrong? Like say you always went to a particular restaurant with a partner and your partner dies. What's wrong with saying, you know what? I don't want to go to that restaurant ever again because my person's not with me. You know, I don't think that there's anything pathological no. around that. No. Um, now, if the person says, I don't want to, and it's not an issue for me. But if they say, I really want to, but I feel like I can't, mm -hmm. then that's a different story. But that's not a mental pathology. disorder. No, no. Not a pathology. A, a challenge that someone's trying to work through, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there are ways to help people be able to do that. And so without making it seem like there's something wrong with them because mm -hmm. they don't want to, or they they have ambivalent feelings, or they're afraid, or you know. Right. And uh, I, I, sorry, Brian. You, <laughs> you. you. <laughs> um, the other thing I just realized is we're talking about this and we haven't really, pe people might be thinking, well, okay, you're talking about this new publication. What is it? Where is it? And okay. so maybe we could just address that. So obviously in this Dougie Dialogues episode, we can't unpack it, but if you want to, uh, there will be another link under this episode that takes you directly to that two pager. Um, and we're really, really excited to announce a awareness campaign that we are 
putting out into the world. Uh, and you will also have a link to our website. Uh, well, it's a web page on our website. And it is www.dougie.org backslash understand grief. And the hashtag is understand grief. And we'd really love to encourage folks uh, to just look at the website. And if you do align with those principles, if you say, well, yeah, this, this resonates with me. And I do want our, our, our folks in the world to be more grief informed. Uh, and I will say that that's one of the big things people say. They say, I want to be more grief informed. I want to understand how to help people who are grieving. That this is an opportunity to do that and to share it, put it on your social media. Uh, I want to make it very clear that this is not a fundraising campaign. We're not asking for funds. We're not asking anyone to, to make donations in regards to this campaign. It is solely to help raise awareness about what grief truly is and how do we better understand and then put that understanding into action. Yes, and those resources are free they're downloadable mm -hmm. we love to see people put them out on any venues you know social media platforms that you have and hey guys really so we can out. follow follow along and you know see all the great work you're doing out there and you know it's it's a community effort uh we're happy to to kind of start that momentum going but we recognize that we have a fabulous community um and in, in the grief world in terms of lots of children's bereavement centers out there doing some really excellent work to support children, teens, young adults and families who are grieving. And we, we, we invite them to join us in this, uh, in this campaign and to, to just really help raise consciousness around understanding grief and to you know, do the good deeds, so to speak, because uh, what, we, what we've talked about already, but is, what happens when people don't understand grief and how that impacts people who are grieving and how it can isolate people and how it can make grieving is hard enough. Um, it can make it worse. And so we actually have an opportunity to make it better. Um, and not, that's not to say that you're trying to eliminate the grief or make it different, but what I'm saying is we can be more su supportive and do things that are more helpful than, than are less helpful or potentially sometimes harmful. And I, I think, Monique, there have been a lot of complicating factors, again, during the, the two plus years of the pandemic. Yeah. And of course, none of us fully know what all is ahead, but there have been so many factors that complicate how people are able to address their grief, to process their right. grief. And I think those waves of reality around what couldn't happen will hit people in different times. I know I can speak for myself. My, my mother died during the pandemic and my brother six months later died of COVID after four weeks in the hospital. And in both cases, I was not able to visit them in person. My brother's wife was not even permitted into the hospital when they knew he had a, you know, less than a day or two to live. And that sort of shock around that takes a while to really come to terms with and, and also be able to unpack socially with with yeah. other people, with friends in person, not just virtually. And, and certainly virtual and Zoom and all of the platforms have their place, but there's, for me at least, nothing like a hug from a friend or being able to share my grief with other people in person. Yeah. And I know, you know, Donna, you're the kind of person that would be there in a heartbeat. And so, you know, you're also thinking about when you're in those positions, and I know you're not alone in this, there's a lot of people where you know that if this was not, if your context, if your environment was not oppressing you to not be able to be there, you would be there. So it's mm -hmm. not a choice. It's not like we have choice during this time. I mean, some people might say, yes, we do. And, and on some meta metaphysical level, we do. But I mean, in if you think about it concretely, 
we don't have a choice if the hospitals are saying you can't come in, right? Unless exactly. you want to get arrested trying to go in there. And I imagine some people tried, you know, and and it's just, it's it's heartbreaking. And I, I feel for you and I feel for all those who've experienced deaths during this time, whether it is from COVID or not mm-hmm. from COVID, we're still having to experience in the context of lockdowns and not being able to access your person at, uh, in the hospital or in another country or in another state. Um, it's just, it's a hard time. And I think it just further emphasizes or um, substantiates maybe the the need for us to just be more compassionate and understanding and open-minded to, hmm, what what is it that people have said they need? And, and I am of the, of the mindset that when somebody says, what do you think that person needs? I'm like, ask them, you know, just ask them um, and- Or offer. Or offer, and yeah, sometimes offer people don't. Some things. Sometimes people don't want to, you know, answer. But I think the reality is, don't just draw assumptions. I think that's the bottom line. Don't draw assumptions, and uh, hopefully, if somebody is not in a space to answer, I'm really hoping that the call to action will be assist people with that to say, okay, here's what has been written and expressed about what people who are grieving have said they need. So hopefully these steps that I can take to help support others will be helpful. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it will be. We are getting close to our, our time. So I just want to remind folks to please join our campaign. Uh, we would love to, to have you, you know, again, tag us. We'd love to see what you're doing. We'd love to see this momentum go. If you have any questions, feedback, thoughts, ideas, we'd love to hear those. Donna, any other thing uh, that you think of at this moment that you can think of at this moment you'd like to share? Just that I think we all need to be compassionate and listen. I mean, listening is one of the biggest things without judgment, without telling people what to do unless they ask and, and just being present. It's very hard sometimes to to be with someone who is in pain, but it's one of the greatest gifts I think that we can give each other. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Donna. All right, hashtag understand grief. We look forward to having you join us um, and we look forward to seeing you in a future Dougie Dialogues episode. (laughs) Thanks Thanks so much, Donna, for joining me. (laughs) Okay, Okay. bye-bye.